Yo, what's up guys, it's Merle here and welcome to my channel and today we're gonna have a character breakdown for Zeldris and my boy Chandler Oh my god, Zeldris is the festival unit for this new holy war and Chandler is like one of the side characters Basically, it's almost impossible to pull him low-key, not gonna lie, it took me like a lot of rotations But we are gonna be talking about these um units real quick just so you guys can get a better understanding of these units Like what gear you should use, which one should you summon for, and are is this banner even worth summoning at all, you know? Um, we're gonna first talk about our boy, the festival unit, Demon King's Deputy Executioner Zeldris. So you already can tell this boy is the op, you know, he works with the feds and all that good stuff. Um, but basically, um, let's look at his costumes real quick, you know? Look at it. Um, he got a lot of costume with his shirts, shirts off, so we can't respect that one. Oh, this one looks like it matches with, um, oh, this looks cool. It looks like it matches with, um, a Salma Mayo, this flame outfit. But yeah, I have a lot of costumes that are maxed out. Only thing that's a problem is my rolls on my gear, um, or I would have a lot more higher um, CC, pretty much. Got the swords. Look, like, is that? Yeah, it's an umbrella with the flame. And you got the baton for police brutality. You got the hair. All right, as you can see, I got this cool combination of stuff. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, you can see my gear is HP slash defense. Didn't really got kind of trash rolls. Um, not 15% perfect or anything like that. He can probably be pushed up to 57 KCC somewhere up there. Probably touching 50, almost 58. You never know. Um, but first, let's talk about his kit. So we're going to first break that down for you guys and let's go. So this time we're going to be talking about Zeldra's kit. Um, yes, Zeldra's do have an attack card. Um, basically what it says, inflicts cut damage equals to 500% of attack. That cannot be a critical strike on one enemy. So if you don't know what that means, it basically means he will never crit on his card no matter what the circumstance is. And also, you know, if you don't know what cut does, it's additional damage equal to 50% of 100% of critical damage. So basically what it means is the more critical damage you do, the stronger this card will be. So keep that in mind whenever you're building a Zeldris. If you care about, you know, making sure his one attack card is super, super strong. Um, you can see an animation of this right now. And with that baton, Zeldris, boop, 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 boop. Police brutality! Alright, so that you can see it's a cool, cool animation. You've been seeing that he has that debuff on him. That's basically what Zeldris AoE is. Um, you can see down here. It depletes one move ultimate gauge orb at the end of the enemy's turn on bronze. And on silver and gold, that's when it gets super, super strong. Um, he depletes two ultimate gauge orbs at, at the end of the enemy's turn. And the save ultimate gauge for one turn on silver. And then gold, oh my god. Depletes two ultimate move gauge orb at the end of the enemy's turn. And the save ultimate moves for two turns. That is actually pretty nice, and you can see a cool animation of it right now. So here you go, boom, and there you go. You see the debuffs right there. Now, if you don't know what, know how why this is so strong, um, pretty much a lot of teams like the ult rush, especially like when you have like Goddess Elizabeth or Gother, they really really like push for Gother or Goddess Elizabeth ultimate. And having them to save ultimate move is also pretty clutch because you know you can save ult move, and then they will be stuck with those two ultimates in their hand for that for that one given turn, which is pretty nice. At like reducing the pe person's chance of getting like a, a very like broken card like maybe a rank up another card so they can get the stun a shield it's so many possibilities from when you can just like seal one card off of an opponent's hand which is pretty nice there's a reason why a lot of people like to run stun units and all that good stuff just because being able to seal people's hands making them not even be able to do anything it's so like amazing pp especially when you can just you know do it with basically a non-damaging aoe like this one um, he also has his ultimate right here, which inflicts damage to 630% of the attack on one enemy, decreases HP related stats of all enemies by 5% for two turns. Um, it says the multiplier percentage X right here. I guess they didn't finish this part off for, at last, but, um, I'm showing you right here. Mine says, mine is maxed out. So it's 945%, um, three turns and HP is 15% as the decrease. So. It's an ultimate that's single attack, um, but the debuff part goes to like everyone on the party or enemy side. So that's pretty, pretty nice. Um, you can see an animation of it right now. Here we go. Let's go, Zeldris. Zeldris. Oh my god. Okay, okay. This man got the holy sword. Jesus. Look like a freaking lightsaber. Oh, it just does that. Oh my god. It just shot up a beam. Oh my god. Are you Shin? And you can see the HP related stat thing came up right there. So you can see Zelda's got some very, very cool animations. 
um on his car attacks and he seemed like he has more of a like um a offensive part and a support part so he's very he got a very mixed kit um now there's a lot of problems with having a mixed kit um a lot of people are really complaining about this because he has a kit that's very mixed because you know he's a holy war festival unit um a lot of people have been complaining about it but you know i'm talking about his passives right now um those are usually the most thing that people really be talking about his passive um increases allies basic stats by two percent for every debuff applied on enemies limited 10 times so it's pretty much gonna be like only um a 20 percent basic stats increase if you get like i don't know the limited mount by 10 times so keep that in mind he also has his commandment right here which a lot of people also complain about um which is if a critical strike occurs from skill use decrease crit chance and crit damage by 10 percent applies to both allies and enemies when entering the battle excludes that match limited three times so a lot of people have been complaining about that because people run this with assault mode meliotis you already know with assault mode meliotis that boy crit a lot so now he's getting his critical damage and critical chance decreased all because of Zeldris commandment so a lot of people have been complaining about that part of him and he's supposed to be like some a person that's supposed to like buff up the the demon meta so yeah i mean i can also show you guys his um his level one base stats if you really want to i'm pretty sure a lot of people might want to see that his level one base stats real quick um you have the attack right here um pierce rate 70 percent resistance 45 percent regeneration zero crit chance 15 percent because he doesn't need it crit dam critical damage 185 crit resistance 40 crit defense 65 percent recovery rate 105 percent and life still at 10 percent all right so let's get into nitty-gritty on why a lot of people don't like um festival zeldris now a lot of people have big problems with festival zeldris because you know let's be honest because he's just a festival unit like if we're comparing him to a unit he's pretty up there and being like a top tier type of s s or ss tier unit because he does have a very unique and also you know good kit um because he does have like a busted like cards and all that good stuff but a lot of people are comparing him to festivals to other festivals because he is you know a festival unit which is not a very fair thing to do because he was just made to just buff up a solo menus in general but he also can be worked with a lot of other debuff teams like festival king and stuff like that and you know a lot of people if you're gonna be creating them to festival units it's kind of hard to do it also because you know his his kit is just like it's, it's a dps card and also a support card and whenever you have like a mix um role like that it's very hard to like you know be good in terms of like other units because it, if you have mixed roles you got to think about that this is a card game at the end of the game in terms of pvp or pve in general so if you're a dps you better have two cards and do damage if you're gonna be a supporter you better have two cards that do damn i'm mean, not do damage but support and when you have like what zelda has where he has attack and a support it's come that's when you get inconsistency and a lot of people are probably gonna say yo if you use them so my you're saying you can use that deep up card but what happens when you get a lot more cut cards than you do um a deep up card then you're in a bind because let's just say what if Zeldris had, instead of that cut card, he had a, a stun card that was at like Ellie, a move, stance card, and all that good stuff? How good do you think you have a support card next to a support card? Very, very good. And that's because he's a support, he'll be a supporter slash supporter. Or a lot of people have been saying, yo, if he had like, a, you know, another DPS card instead of that, um, that Diva card, he can be a crazy DPS. I mean, he, can, he could be a crazy DPS, but. He'll be compared to other DPS that are like in that festival range as well, right? Wouldn't you say so? You compare it to the now other festivals, so you have to compare it to Lolly. You'll then have to compare it to Lolly Merlin Festival, um, Lost Vein, the one SR. If you're talking about being a DPS, it, you have to compare it to that, and then you'll probably still see that he's still lower tier in terms of DPS. And I guess that's the big problem with Zelda's that people have is that because he's his kid is just mixed it's mixed it's going to cause inconsistency now it is a card game so you might end up not even pulling any of his Zeltra's cards or you might just pull one card which is going to probably be a stack card it's a lot of things that can happen in pp which makes it the pp like so hard to play around with when in terms of team building because anything can happen um, that's why a lot of people just use like a rank up unit um a simple dps and probably a little supporter like a goddess a little bit that's why people usually do like simple team building like that um you also have his ultimates his ultimate is single i don't know what they was thought 
don't know what they thought about making it his ultimate single. Like, single ultimates are so dead in PvP right now. If you're not, like, the one Escanor who can literally, like, have a possibility of taking out two units with a max ultimate, with your um ultimate, like, why are we using you in PvP? Like, Goddess Elizabeth exists for a reason. I know you're going to be probably fit on a sub on of this team where you're going to have, like, the chance of getting, like, multiple debuffs because, you know, you're going to be able to take away Gage and all the good stuff, but... My guy, why? Why do you have a single ultimate? Like... And that's where you get the inconsistency right there. Like, what happens if you don't pull a debuff card? And you might have odds where you might get the ultimate. They might get the ultimate on you. And then you're pretty much done for. Because it's so inconsistent in terms of supporting. And let's, let's just say, imagine if it was like a stun card. You know, that would have been helpful right there. You could have just stunned stun a person like, I don't know, a unit. And it would have been pretty good. And he will be fitting that support role. Now, like I said before, someone, I mean, Zeldris is a support unit for a summon menu as it is right now more units might come out and he might be fitting on an even better team which leads a lot of potential for this guy um it's a, if you're going to talk about festival units obviously he'll probably be the lower tier one because he's specific on some of menus usually that's what he's probably was made for for some of menus but if we're talking about units in general he's a very very good pvp type of unit sss tier or S tier just because how his kit is just very good at being a defensive supportive set and also doing you know I want to say doing damage but you know he can do damage sometimes um sometimes his sometimes his commandment also hurts um a solo menus as well and that's honestly my opinion on Zeldris um I really like him I'm not gonna lie to you guys I, I it might seem like I'm like trashing Zeldris but I really like Zeldris um I think he's pretty fun to use in PvP and I've been having fun with him, with my Salma Meliodas team, honestly. So, again, if you like having fun with Salma Meliodas, I mean, use them. Like, that's what I like to do in PvP. Just have fun with it. Um, just enjoy myself. That's pretty much all I like to do. So, this time, we're going to be talking about my boy Chandler. You already know, man. You got the Pacifier Fiend. Is that what it's called? Pacifier Fiend Magician Chandler. So, let's have some fun with this guy. Um, let me show you the costume. As you can see right here, he has the red demon outfit on. <laughs> it's hilarious but yeah that's the red demon outfit we got this one that 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 and th this one with a shirt off oh yeah look at that back fat oh yeah we got that we got his cane all that good stuff we got his top hat pretty pretty nice stuff pretty nice mine's is ur hp size defense with some trash rolls and he's only one out of six because only pulled him one time out of multiple rotations it's tough it's hard to pull chandler on his banner i mean sometimes you might get lucky and pull him but you know it's hard to grab him because you know he's he is right up but you know he's not guaranteed all right so let's talk about this man's kit real quick for you guys um he basically on this debuff card he has a valenti he has valenti kit well not kit but you know valenti debuff card which means it stops like special move effects and ultimate move effects excluding um excluding stances recovery skills so inflicts damage equal to 400 percent attack on one enemy restricts all skill effects including ultimate moves effects for two turns so you can actually see it's pretty nice to stop him like let's say go to gets hit with it boom he can't ult he can't take away all your gauge when he ults or boom i don't know the one Astagor gets hit with the debuff somehow and stay debuffs and now he doesn't get that special effect from death damage so his ultimate will only hit once like it's all those possibilities or let's say Gota gets hit with it and now he can't rank up or debuff you at all because he's removing the skill effect um that's pretty much it and how busted this card is especially on chandler because he also let's wait actually show the animation first we got to do that for the boy especially when he's in a red demon outfit so boom does that good stuff did a lot of damage with that and he got a, oh my god look at that lifesteal holy holy um, so we're gonna be looking at his other card real quick, which is the stance card. His stance card is probably the most busted thing about Chandler at it as it is right now. Um, his Asuma stands for two turns, which taunts on his goal. Enemy inflicts damage equal to 300% of attack when taking it. Attacks inflicts di additional damage equal to 100% of the damage taken. This counter is super super busted. On silver and gold, it can literally one shot you. Literally, it can almost one shot you on silver and on gold. It literally is going to probably be a one shot, uh, especially if he has like a lot of attack damage. Oh my man, this man does crazy damage. Like, and the funny thing is, this stuff can break through Merlin's passive. 
You know what Merlin Passive has, like, where it makes the damage fix? If Merlin attacks you while you're in this stance, it can literally one-shot her. It said, forget his, forget her passive. That's how busted this man is, why a lot of people say this man is the true festival unit. Because he just does so much damage in assuming that stance. Especially when you pair that man with an Esterosa team. Now you have this ultimate taunt with an Esterosa. And probably a Tarmio up next to this guy. This, little, this guy going to be literally unkillable. And let's show you the stance card real quick. I mean, it's a very simple animation. So, boom, pow. Showing that little, little shoulder play. And then, pow. 223k right there. <laughs> 223k right there on a, on a test dummy. And you saw, already saw his regular attack card. This is his regular attack card. This is how much his regular attack card did. Literally. 63. While wow, the taunt card is doing crazy damage. You see how, you see how busted that is? Too busted. Now you also have his ultimate, which is basically... Um, it's a it inflicts charge damage equal to 455 percent attack on all enemies. So I think what is it? Was it Droll or was it King? I think it was King that has the charge card, which ignores defense. No, I think King ignores patience. I think it's Droll who has the charge card. Um, but yeah, he has a very strong ultimate as well. If you got him like duped out, it's because 683 percent multiplier is very good at 6 out of 6, and it's AOE. So AOE ultimate is very very good. So let's. Oh, man, I didn't even show the animation thing yet. Oh, wait. All right, let's show it now. Cut two, cut two. Oh, this is a nice moon. Oh, what is that demon up there? What? It's a demon. <laughs> and he made a rain on him. 112k. So my counter, my gold counter was doing more damage than my one out of six ultimates. So you can see already that most likely you're going to be relying on that counter card or in debuff card that's what makes him so busted because if you can also take hit uh, hit a uh, goddess bit with his debuff card you can stop the effect from stun which removes stances cards stop her shield at the same time as well which makes him so busted in pp because he has that one debuff card with also including with his stance card which can make people play very very passive against against him it's so disgusting in pp um we're gonna look at his um passive as well I'm pretty sure a lot of people want to know what his passive does. Um, look at it real quick. Decrease all stats of enemies who use the skill by 7% for one turn in PP. Applies when instant about. Applies before the skill is activated. Stackable. That's the word right there. Stackable. That means if they attack multiple times, it will keep on stacking for that one turn. So if the one that's going to attack two times, that's 14% on, a, on the skill, the second skill. Because if it says before he attacks. That is busted. Literally busted. It can stop so many units who likes to one shot with like multiple cards. He, and then he has a super strong counter. Dude, you can literally just one shot units completely. Just because they might think like, yo, I'm about to one shot with this gold card. He he ha ha. But then you decrease their damage. They literally can't do anything. And it said decrease all stats. Literally all stats. Crit, dam crit damage, pierce rate, all stats crazy that's crazy crazy good super super good in pv oh my god um you're gonna look quickly at his stats as well for you guys i'm pretty sure a lot of people want to see that as well um so this base stats without costumes i'm pretty sure so pierce rate 40 percent resistance 40 percent regeneration 10 percent crit chance 50 percent critical damage 150 percent crit resistance 60 percent crit defense 20 percent Recovery rate 110% and life still at 10%. So it's a pretty, pretty good stat line. Um, like I said before, it seemed like his counter card would be like the most, the best thing you will probably use on this guy. He's most likely going to use his counter card. Um, my opinion on Chandler is he is busted. Um, you might be saying to yourself, like, so is he really the true busted unit? It feels like it when you play with him around in PP because I've literally been clapped by wells using channel who was low dupes using that tarmiel um Esterosa team which i will explain the teams you should use for these units as well i was clapped by that team and they had low dupes that's how good this man is and has how good his kit is especially since a lot of people don't remove stances people don't don't even remove stance unit i've ever seen in pp was probably like goddesses a bit other units can probably like freeze or petrify but if you have Esterosa on the sub I'm giving you your Chandler debuff muni. Like, what's the point of your Petrify unit, your Freeze unit, all that good stuff? You'll need a unit that can clear stance to deal with this guy. And that's the most busted thing about 
using this guy. He's just so disgusting in PvP. Um, that's why a lot of people want to pull him more than Zeldris. So you end up pulling him before Zeldris, you're pretty much gonna be like done with the banner. <laughs> that's how that's how good he is. That like how many people want this man over Zeldris. If you pull this man, you're pretty much done with the banner. One out of six. Mine is one out of six. Still clapping cheeks. That's it. Yo. All right. So. So this time we're gonna be talking about on gear PP for you guys. Uh, I know a lot of people are wondering like, yo, what is the best team for Zeldris at the moment? Um, I personally use this team using Zeldris. I really like it, um, just because you know, it ult rush. Like Meliodas team is always about him getting off his ultimate or like doing as much damage as you can. Because if you're able to like ult rush, then a lot of people will attack you more, which means you know, it'll make it easier for you to build up your passive on Meliodas. Um, I use this team. Just so I can, you know, I usually just push for some of Melio's ultimate. Like, I use Chandler just to, like, debuff the Gother so the Gother can't take away my gauge. Which means I'm easy, it's easier for me to asset, access my Melio's ultimate. Especially since I'm starting out with one gauge with, um, by using Merlin. So that's pretty nice, especially if I'm using CC food. Um, Zelda is just here for his passive, most likely. And also, you know, stop the opponents from ult rushing you. Um, he also, you know, his command is also pretty nice against, you know, the Sorios, the one Escanor teams as well, since they do like the crit a lot. And also against Gother, because, you know, that's also pretty decent against Gother as well. Uh, which gives you a better chance, you know, at surviving, especially when you're using Zelda's passives and kit next to Chandler with his stance card and debuff card. Which makes it more easier for you to ult with a Sobo Meliodas, which is your common goal, because it'll make, you eat, make the match a lot faster. Um, there's also a lot of teams you can just play around with with um, Zeldris. Pretty much debuff teams. Like I think I use like King team and use them as a subunit because, like I said before, you could use them as a subunit, um, put them in the back or something like that, um, and then do something crazy like I don't know. Or you can put them in the front. Um, I use like Evil Lilia just for the memes. But yeah, you can use whatever you want in the front. Probably Goddess Lilia if you really want to, if you want to stall, or I don't know a Chandler. Like it, it all depends on what you want to do. You can use Merlin if you want to. Use Merlin. You can do all a crazy thing with Zeldris because he just like he's just support, support for like debuff types of units. Um, I've seen people also use Keo for Keo team. Like, where where's Keo? Keo is always in the bottom. Like, yeah, he's at the bottom. I've seen this team with like Green Small DN and Zeldris. It wasn't like Green Small DN and Zeldris. Yeah, it was like Green Small DN and Zeldris. And I think they had like the one asking in the back or something like that. And they use this team, which is pretty decent as well. Um, it all depends on what you want to do with Zeldris. Um, Zeldris is a pretty, pretty fun unit to play around with when you're dealing with debuffs. So it's it's not that hard to build around him, honestly. He's pretty good. Now, let's talk about Chandler. Chandler is pretty busted. Not going to lie to you guys. Um, this is the team Chandler usually run. Um, it's the Tarmiel stance team with Estros as a subunit. He's really busted. Not not gonna cap it with you guys. He's really busted. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, all you Zeldris player. Like, but he's toxic. So you know, you got the good old team right here. Um, you put whatever link you want to on your units. But this is basically all you want to do. Oh no, you can put Ludosio on Chandler if you want to. Like, you want to do crazy things with this because you know Chandler has his stance card that also taunts as well, which makes it easier for you to, to like um build up your gold card. Because remember what I said before when explaining this kit. If a lot of people see like Chandler gold card, like they're not going to play around with it. My guys, like they are not going to try to play you at all just because, you know, it'll make them play very, very passively, which means you have old control on Tarmio and Green Gotho as well. So if they play as passive as they want to, you can just keep taking away the gauge while also building up your ultimate gauge until you can just nuke them. And like I said before, this team literally clapped me like literally the person had like low dupes in his team clapped me just because, you know, he was able to build up an ultimate on either like is Gother, is Tarmio, or Tarmio, and then um, Chandler. It's a pretty disgusting um, team just because it has so many AoE ultimates. And that's why Zeldris gets so outlooked because he has a single attack ultimate. Like, if he has like an AoE ultimate paired with a Summon Menu, like that would be looking so disgusting in PvP. Um, but, you know, that, I guess that's one of his pretty much a nerf, really. Um, I mean, HP related stats thing is okay ish, but it doesn't really matter because single attack ultimates are pretty, pretty bad. The PP, but I mean, Zeldra's gonna be paired up with um, a somewhat Meliodas anyway, so I mean, you might pop a revive pretty fast, anyways. So, the ultimate 
I'm not really that bad, but come on, like we all want we want strong, good old, you know, AoE ultimate damage. And you also got Esterosa, which means you're gonna get debuff immunity. So a lot of people can can't take away your gauge. Um PvP right now, it's nothing like people are running like Lilia, blue Lilia out here or anything like that. People are running full on DPS type of team. And when you have Tarmio who has stance card that can reduce damage if he throws up a stance card, or also take away gauge. You have Chandler who has a, a freaking stance card that no one wants to attack when they're at gold card, making them play very, very passive. Because if they attack, they're gonna get one shot by that stance card. You've seen it, me testing out. I use a gold card, the man's attack me on training K and did 223k stronger than his one out six ultimate. This man is doing ultimate damage with his stance card if he attack while he has the gold card up. That's why this team is so busted, and this makes me so upset because you know, back in the day, I used to got so much flack by saying, "Yo," because it was sorry when Tarmiel came out. A lot of people told me like, "Yo, Merle, you should use Tarmiel. You should build a Tarmiel. He's perfect for you." Because I used to back in the day like run like um, triple defense setup teams and clap like Lost Fame players and all that good stuff, and. And, and like so Tarmio was like a match made in heaven like it took a while for me to like um think of a team for him because i think it, like at first impression i think i was like waking up like i would just throw a random team and i didn't really like him at first until i started playing with a lot more like and then i really like oh my god he's really busted he's super cool and good to use but you know a lot of people like the big old pp damage sario and i kept telling people like yo Tarmio is amazing Tarmio is good making all these videos on Tarmio, new year's ellie with Tarmio. Um, Thanos snap Tarmio. Um, who else? Blue Gilton with Tarmio. So many videos on Tarmio because he was just so underrated and so fun to use. Just letting people know, man, this is the truth. Tarmio is the truth around here. And now it seems like right now in PvP, this guy, this team might be a top tier ungear PvP at, as it is right now. If this team becomes more and more popular, like people pull up Chandler a lot more throughout these these um these two weeks that this banner is lasting. Then I can probably honestly say that Chandler, Tarmio, Gorin Gother, and um, Estrosa will probably be a top tier team. Like number one in ungear PvP. Ungear. I don't know how it is going to work in gear PvP. I mean, next week is going to be um, it's gonna be um, reduced damage to um, stance cards, stance units. So that's going to be pretty busted in PvP, especially if you got 6 out of 6 on everybody. Um, I think I think it'll be okay. I mean, the 50% um, recover HP from ultimates might be diff very difficult for you. But I guess you can throw in like a blue guild thunder in the back in front of this team or something like that. And you'll be able to nuke easier. Especially if you bring it down to HP by just um doing simple attacks or countering. So that's gonna be pretty nutty to see in PvP for you guys. Um, like I said before, man, I kinda hated that Tarmio is finally getting the love he wants. He's gonna probably be a top tier teenager. But it won't feel like I'm using an underrated unit anymore. It feel like I'm gonna use like a overrated hyped out unit and stuff. Which makes it makes me upset because I like using like um fun units in PvP. Um That's kinda tough. That's kinda tough. But yeah, um the gear you want to use for Zeldris, it's pretty simple. It's whatever you want to do. Um like I said before, Zeldris is a support type of unit. Um so HP slash defense will work the best on them for terms of CC purposes. But you can run HP slash crit, you want a little bit more damage when you use your cut card. Um my boy Chandler, he is HP slash defense. Um, he's a tank unit, so he wants as much HP as possible so he can live out these hits. And that's pretty much. I think I went through like everything. Like a lot of people are confused about. Um. Oh yeah, is the banner worth summoning? I think I said it before, but Chandler seemed like the better unit to use if, if you're talking about PVP. A lot of people use this Chandler team that I'm showing you guys right now. And like ungear PP with like a void food. Like this literally is the best team. Chandler can be used for any type of team, guys. Like he's a stance taunt unit. Like there's a lot of possibilities you can use for this team. Just think of any taunt taunt teams you ever used before in PP and just apply that to Chandler. That's how good he is right now. Um Yeah, Stance Metal is probably gonna be a top tier um team in, in like a week. So that's gonna be pretty fun to see that um Tarmio getting the love he deserves. Um, people being toxic because this team is super toxic. Like, I I have trouble facing off against this team because it's just so like like people will run a void food and it will stall you out completely, unless you have like some super high I don't know multiple gold cards where you can be able to kill off one unit. Usually Chandler, then it's gonna be very very hard to like play against this team, especially since you got to deal with Tarmio stance card who can reduce the damage, 
You have Gother and Tarmio who can take away Gage. You have Chandler who has a super strong counter card. And once you get gold, it's going to be hard to um, take away um, that stance card. You might be saying to yourself, can't you just use like Goddess Elizabeth to remove the stance? If Chandler hits you with his debuff card, like I said before, it's like MK2 Valenti. She, it will stop the special effects or the effects of the move card. So he won't be able to, so Goddess Elizabeth won't be able to remove his stances. And that makes freaking Chandler invincible at that moment. Invincible. All you have to do is just keep stalling out Goddess Elizabeth until the point where the opponent will probably forfeit or get ult rush to, to oblivion. And that's the bad thing about um, dealing with that team. That's why I, a lot of people just say, yo, if you pull Chandler, you can just skip the entire banner. And that's the sad thing about it. Even though Zelda, I think Zelda is super fun to play with. He just needs, I don't know. But he, had, he has potential as well. He has potential. I'll say he has potential. Every unit in PvP has potential in some way. Just got to find that one unit. But again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think, again, I went over everything. Um, I'm definitely going to make some fun videos uh, for tomorrow. Probably play some global. So if you catch me on global, hit me with that good old emo spam. You know, I will definitely respect that out of you. You know, I love to see the emo spams so I can, you know, DM you for respect, of course. Um, I'll probably do... Oh, yeah, I got to do that Zelda turn into a DPS video. So that would be pretty fun to do and record. See how many possibilities. Like, I showed an example, just a simple example. Obviously, I'll do other potential um, units for that cut card. So, increasing this critical damage, that'll be pretty nice to see or accomplish. So, again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully, this helps you out in thinking, like, if you should summon for Zeldris or um, Zeldris Chandler banner, if you really want to. If you're, like, person who played global. Because a lot of global people will be wondering, like, should they summon on this banner? Because, you know, a lot of people have been waiting for a summon menu with this buff. And, honestly, um... You can. I mean, Zeldris. I don't think Zeldris. Really, does Zeldris really? I want to say, does Zeldris need 6 out of 6? Uh, he has a single attack ultimate. Ugh. But for the most part, no. Because you're going to be basically taking away Gage for the most part with Zeldris. You can just keep rushing your um, Salmo Medios ultimate. But that 6 out of 6 ultimate really helps. When you have it. Honestly, it helps. But again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully, this helps you out in understanding... Um, why people was hating Zeldris or anything like that. Hopefully you feel like have confidence in summoning for Zeldris if you really like the character. Um, I honestly, my, me personally, I 6 out of 6 them. And I enjoy the character still to this day. Well, it's only been like one day, right? It's only been like two days, right? So, um, yeah. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Pretty sure I said that already. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment all down below. Um, are you going to be summoning on this banner? When it comes to on global, are you summoning it right now? If you're playing JP or KR, let me know, guys, in the comment down below. This is really, guys, and I'm out. Peace.